Rococo or, less commonly Rococo, or late Baroque, was a highly ornamental and theatrical style of decoration which combined asymmetry, scrolling curves, gilding, white and pastel colors, sculpted molding, and trompe l'oeil frescoes to create the illusions of surprise, motion and drama. It first appeared in France and Italy in the 1730s and spread to Central Europe in the 1750s and 1760s. It is often described as the final expression of the Baroque movement. The Rococo style began in France in the first part of the 18th century in the reign of Louis XV as a reaction against the more formal and geometric style Louis XIV. It was known as the style Rocai, or Rocai style. It soon spread other parts of Europe, particularly northern Italy, Bavaria, Austria, other parts of Germany, and Russia. It also came to influence the other arts, particularly sculpture, furniture, silverware and glassware, painting, music, and theatre. <inaudible> Origin of the term The word rococo was first used in 1835 in France, as a humorous variation of the word rocaille or a combination of rocaille and baroque. Rakai was originally a method of decoration, using pebbles, seashells and cement, which was often used to decorate grottos and fountains since the Renaissance. In the late 17th and early 18th century it became the term for a kind of decorative motif or ornament that appeared in the late style Louis XIV, in the form of a seashell interlaced with acanthus leaves. In 1736 the designer and jeweler Jean Mondin published the premier livre de forme Raquel et Cartel, a collection of designs for ornaments of furniture and interior decoration. It was the first appearance in print of the term, Rakai, to designate the style. The carved or molded seashell motif was combined with palm leaves or twisting vines to decorate doorways, furniture, wall panels and other architectural elements. In the 19th century, the term was used to describe architecture or music which was excessively ornamental. Since the mid-19th century, the term has been accepted by art historians. While there is still some debate about the historical significance of the style, Rococo is now often considered as a distinct period in the development of European art. Topic. Characteristics Rococo featured exuberant decoration, with an abundance of curves, counter-curves, undulations and elements modeled on nature. The exteriors of Rococo buildings are often simple, while the interiors are entirely dominated by their ornament. The style was highly theatrical, designed to impress and awe at first sight. Floor plans of churches were often complex, featuring interlocking ovals. In palaces, grand stairways became centerpieces, and offered different points of view of the decoration. The style often integrated painting, molded stucco, and wood carving, and quadratura, or illusionist ceiling paintings, which were designed to give the impression that the those entering the room were looking up at the sky, where cherubs and other figures were gazing down at them. Materials used included included stucco, either painted or left white, combinations of different colored woods, lacquered wood in the Japanese style, and ornament of gilded bronze. The intent was to create an impression of surprise, awe and wonder on first view. <laughs> France The Rocaille style, or French Rococo, appeared in Paris during the reign Louis XV, and flourished between about 1723 and 1759. The style was used particularly in salons, a new style of room designed to impress and entertain guests. The most prominent example was the Salon of the Princess in Hôtel de Soubise in Paris, designed by Germain Boffrand and Charles-Joseph Notoire the characteristics of French Rococo included exceptional artistry, especially in the complex frames made for mirrors and paintings, which sculpted in plaster and often gilded, and the use of vegetal forms vines, leaves, flowers intertwined in complex designs. The furniture also featured sinuous curves and vegetal designs. The leading furniture designers and craftsmen in the style included Just Oriel Maisonnier, Charles Crescent, and Nicolas Pinot. The Rocaille style lasted in France until the mid 18th century, and while it became more curving and vegetal, it never achieved the extravagant exuberance of the Rococo in Bavaria, Austria, and Italy. 
The discoveries of Roman antiquities beginning in 1738 at Herculaneum and especially at Pompeii in 1748 turned French architecture in the direction of the more symmetrical and less flamboyant neoclassicism. Italy Artists in Italy, particularly Venice, also produced an exuberant Rococo style. Venetian commodes imitated the curving lines and carved ornament of the French rocaille, but with a particular Venetian variation, the pieces were painted, often with landscapes or flowers or scenes from Gardi or other painters, or chinoiserie, against a blue or green background, matching the colors of the Venetian school of painters whose work decorated the salons. Notable decorative painters included Giovanni Battista Tipolo, who painted ceilings and murals of both churches and palazzos, and Giovanni Battista Crozato who painted the ballroom ceiling of the C.A. Resinico in the Quadraturo manner, giving the illusion of three dimensions. Tipolo traveled to Germany with his son during 1752–1754, decorating the ceilings of the Würzburg residence, one of the major landmarks of the Bavarian Rococo. An earlier celebrated Venetian painter was Giovanni Battista Piazzetta, who painted several notable church ceilings. The Venetian Rococo also featured exceptional glassware, particularly Murano glass, often engraved and colored, which was exported across Europe. Works included multicolor chandeliers and mirrors with extremely ornate frames. Topic: <laughs> Southern Germany and Russia. The Rococo decorative style reached its summit in southern Germany and Central Europe from the 1730s until the 1770s. It was first introduced from France through the publications and works of French architects and decorators, including the sculptor Claude III Audrin, the interior designer Giles Marie Oppenort, the architect Germain Boffrand, the sculptor Jean Mondin, and the draftsman and engraver Pierre Lepotre. Their work had an important influence on the German Rococo style. German architects adapted the Rococo style but made it far more asymmetric and loaded with more ornate decoration than the French original. The German style was characterized by an explosion of forms that cascaded down the walls. It featured molding formed into curves and counter curves, twisting and turning patterns, ceilings and walls with no right angles, and stucco foliage which seemed to be creeping up the walls and across the ceiling. The decoration was often gilded or silvered to give it contrast with the white or pale pastel walls. The Belgian born architect and designer Francois de Cuvilliers was one of the first to create a Rococo building in Germany, with the Pavilion of Amalienburg in Munich, 1734 1739, inspired by the pavilions of the Trianon and Marly in France. It was built as a hunting lodge, with a platform on the roof for shooting pheasants. The Hall of Mirrors in the interior, by the painter and stucco sculptor Johann Baptist Zimmermann, was far more exuberant than any French Rococo. Another notable example of the early German Rococo is Würzburg Residence, 1737-1744, constructed for the Prince Bishop of Würzburg by Balthasar Neumann. Neumann had traveled to Paris and consulted with the French Rocaille decorative artists Germain Boffrand and Robert de Cotte. While the exterior was in more sober Baroque style, the interior, particularly the stairways and ceilings, was much lighter and decorative. The Prince Bishop imported the Italian Rococo painter Giovanni Battista Tipolo in 1750-53 to create a mural over the top of the three-level ceremonial stairway. Newman described the interior of the residence as a theater of light. The stairway was also the central element in a residence Newman built at the Augustusburg Palace in Brühl In that building the stairway led the visitors up through a stucco fantasy of paintings, sculpture, ironwork and decoration, with surprising views at every turn. In the 1740s and 1750s, a number of notable pilgrimage churches were constructed in Bavaria, with interiors decorated in a distinctive variant of the Rococo style. One of the most notable examples is the Wieskirche designed by Dominicus Zimmermann. Like most of the Bavarian pilgrimage churches, the exterior is very simple, with pastel walls, and little ornament. Entering the church the visitor encounters an astonishing theatre of movement and light. It features an oval-shaped sanctuary, and a deambulatory in the same form, filling in the church with light from all sides. The white walls contrasted with columns of blue and pink stucco in the choir, and the domed ceiling surrounded by plaster angels below a dome representing the heavens crowded with colorful biblical figures. 
Other notable pilgrimage churches include the Basilica of the Fourteen Holy Helpers by Balthasar Newman Johann Michael Fischer was the architect of Ottoboren Abbey another Bavarian Rococo landmark. The church features, like much of the Rococo architecture in Germany, a remarkable contrast between the regularity of the façade and the overabundance of decoration in the interior. The Russian Empress Catherine the Great was another admirer of the Rococo. The Golden Cabinet of the Chinese Palace in the Palace Complex of Oranienbaum near St. Petersburg, designed by the Italian Antonio Rinaldi, is an example of the Russian Rococo. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Britain. In Great Britain, Rococo was called the French taste and had less influence on design and the decorative arts than in continental Europe, although its influence was felt in such areas as silverwork, porcelain, and silks. William Hogarth helped develop a theoretical foundation for Rococo beauty. Though not mentioning Rococo by name, he argued in his Analysis of Beauty 1753 that the undulating lines and S-curves prominent in Rococo were the basis for grace and beauty in art or nature unlike the straight line or the circle in classicism, Rococo was slow in arriving in England. Before entering the Rococo, British furniture for a time followed the neoclassical Palladian model under designer William Kent, who designed for Lord Burlington and other important patrons of the arts. Kent travelled to Italy with Lord Burlington between 1712 and 1720, and brought back many models and ideas from Palladio. He designed the furniture for Hampton Court Palace 1732, Lord Burlington's Chiswick House 1729, London, Thomas Coke's Hokum Hall, Norfolk, Robert Walpole's Pile at Houghton, for Devonshire House in London, and at Rosham, mahogany made its appearance in England in about 1720, and immediately became popular for furniture, along with walnut wood. The Rococo began to make an appearance in England between 1740 and 1750. The furniture of Thomas Chippendale was the closest to the Rococo style. In 1754, he published Gentlemen's and Cabinet Makers Directory, a catalogue of designs for Rococo, chinoiserie, and even Gothic furniture, which achieved wide popularity, going through three editions. Unlike French designers, Chippendale did not employ marquetry or inlays in his furniture. The predominant designer of inlaid furniture were Vial and Cobb, the cabinet makers for King George III. Another important figure in British furniture was Thomas Johnson, who in 1761, very late in the period, published a catalogue of Rococo furniture designs. These include furnishings based on rather fantastic Chinese and Indian motifs, including a canopy bed crowned by a Chinese pagoda now in the Victoria and Albert Museum. Other notable figures in the British Rococo included the silversmith Charles Friedrich Candler. <laughs> Decline and end The art of Boucher and other painters of the period, with its emphasis on decorative mythology and gallantry, soon inspired a reaction, and a demand for more «noble» themes. While the Rococo continued in Germany and Austria, the French Academy in Rome began to teach the classic style. This was confirmed by the nomination of Latroy as director of the Academy in 1738, and then in 1751 by Charles-Joseph Natoire. Madame de Pompadour, the mistress of Louis XV contributed to the decline of the Rococo style. In 1750 she sent her nephew, Abel François Poisson de Vandières, on a two-year mission to study artistic and archaeological developments in Italy. He was accompanied by several artists, including the engraver Nicolas Cochin and the architect Soufflot. They returned to Paris with a passion for classical art. Vandières became the Marquis of Marigny, and was named Director General of the King's Buildings. He turned official French architecture toward the neoclassical. Cochin became an important art critic, he denounced the petite style of Boucher, and called for a grand style with a new emphasis on antiquity and nobility in the academies of painting and architecture. The beginning of the end for Rococo came in the early 1760s as figures like Voltaire and Jacques Francois Blondel began to voice their criticism of the superficiality and degeneracy of the art. Blondel decried the ridiculous jumble of shells, dragons, reeds, palm trees and plants", in contemporary interiors. By 1785, Rococo had passed out of fashion in France, replaced by the order and seriousness of neoclassical artists like Jacques-Louis David. 
In Germany, late 18th century Rococo was ridiculed as Zoff und Peruke, pigtail and periwig, and this phase is sometimes referred to as Zoffstel. Rococo remained popular in the provinces and in Italy, until the second phase of neoclassicism, empire style, arrived with Napoleonic governments and swept Rococo away. Topic. Furniture and decoration The ornamental style called rocaille emerged in France between 1710 and 1750, mostly during the regency and reign of Louis XV. The style was also called Louis Cannes. Its principal characteristics were picturesque detail, curves and counter curves, asymmetry, and a theatrical exuberance. On the walls of new Paris salons, the twisting and winding designs, usually made of gilded or painted stucco, wound around the doorways and mirrors like vines. One of the earliest examples was the Hotel Soubise in Paris 1704-05, with its famous oval salon decorated with paintings by Boucher, and Charles Joseph Natoire, the best-known French furniture designer of the period was just Oriel Meissonnier 1695-1750, who was also a sculptor, painter, and goldsmith for the royal household. He held the title of official designer to the chamber and cabinet of Louis XV. His work is well known today because of the enormous number of engravings made of his work which popularized the style throughout Europe. He designed works for the royal families of Poland and Portugal. Italy was another place where the Rococo flourished, both in its early and later phases. Craftsmen in Rome, Milan and Venice all produced lavishly decorated furniture and decorative items. The sculpted decoration included florets, palmettes, seashells, and foliage, carved in wood. The most extravagant rocaille forms were found in the consoles, tables designed to stand against walls. The commodes, or chests, which had first appeared under Louis XIV, were richly decorated with rocaille ornament made of gilded bronze. They were made by master craftsmen including Jean-Pierre Latz and also featured marquetry of different colored woods, sometimes placed in checkerboard cubic patterns, made with light and dark woods. The period also saw the arrival of chinoiserie, often in the form of lacquered and gilded commodes, called Falcon de Chine of Verny Martin, after the ebonist who introduced the technique to France. Ormolu, or gilded bronze, was used by master craftsmen including Jean-Pierre Latz. Latz made a particularly ornate clock mounted atop a cartonier for Frederick the Great for his palace in Potsdam. Pieces of imported Chinese porcelain were often mounted in ormolu gilded bronze rococo settings for display on tables or consoles in salons. Other craftsmen imitated the Japanese art of lacquered furniture, and produced commodes with Japanese motifs. British rococo tended to be more restrained. Thomas Chippendale's furniture designs kept the curves and feel, but stopped short of the French heights of whimsy. The most successful exponent of British Rococo was probably Thomas Johnson, a gifted carver and furniture designer working in London in the mid-18th century. Painting Elements of the rocaille style appeared in the work of some French painters, including a taste for the picturesque in details, curves and counter-curves, and dissymmetry which replaced the movement of the Baroque with exuberance, though the French rocaille never reached the extravagance of the Germanic rococo. The leading proponent was Antoine Watteau, particularly in Pilgrimage on the Isle of Cythera 1717, Louvre, in a genre called Fête Galante depicting scenes of young nobles gathered together to celebrate in a pastoral setting. Watteau died in 1721 at the age of 37, but his work continued to have influence through the rest of the century. The pilgrimage to Cythera painting was purchased by Frederick the Great of Prussia in 1752 or 1765 to decorate his palace of Charlottenburg in Berlin. The successor of Watteau and the Fay Galante in decorative painting was Francois Boucher, 1703-1770, the favorite painter of Madame de Pompadour. His work included the sensual Toilette de Venus, 1746, which became one of the best known examples of the style. Boucher participated in all of the genres of the time, designing tapestries, models for porcelain sculpture, set decorations for the Paris Opera and Opera Comique, and décor for the Fair of Saint Laurent. Other important painters of the Fête Galante style included Nicolas Lancret and Jean-Baptiste Pater. The style particularly influenced François Lemoyne, who painted the lavish decoration of the ceiling of the Salon of Hercules at the Palace of Versailles, completed in 1735. 
Paintings with Fate's gallant and mythological themes by Boucher, Pierre Charles Trimaliers, and Charles Joseph Natoire decorated the famous Salon of the Hotel Soubise in Paris. Other Rococo painters include Jean Francois de Troyes (1679–1752), Jean Baptiste Van Loo (1685–1745), his two sons Louis Michel Van Loo (1707–1771) and Charles Amédée Philippe Van Loo (1719–1795), his younger brother Charles André Van Loo (1705–1765) and Nicolas Lancret (1690–1743). In Austria and southern Germany, Italian painting had the largest effect on the Rococo style. The Venetian painter Giovanni Battista Tipolo, assisted by his son, Giovanni Domenico Tipolo, was invited to paint frescoes for the Würzburg residence 1720 the most prominent painter of Bavarian Rococo churches was Johann Baptist Zimmermann, who painted the ceiling of the Wieskirche Sculpture and porcelain Religious sculpture followed the Italian Baroque style, as exemplified in the theatrical altarpiece of the Karlskirch in Vienna, however, much of Rococo sculpture was lighter and offered more movement than the classical style of Louis XIV. It was encouraged in particular by Madame de Pompadour, mistress of Louis XV, who commissioned many works for her chateau and gardens. The sculptor Edmé Bouchardin represented Cupid engaged in carving his darts of love from the club of Hercules Rococo style. The demigod is transformed into the soft child, the bone-shattering club becomes the heart-scathing arrows, just as marble is so freely replaced by stucco. Étienne Maurice Falconet was another leading French sculptor during the period. The French sculptors, Jean-Louis Lemoyne, Jean-Baptiste Lemoyne, Louis-Simon Boiseau, Michel Clodian, and Pigalle were also active. In Italy, Antonio Corradini was among the leading sculptors of the Rococo style. A Venetian, he travelled around Europe, working for Peter the Great in St. Petersburg, for the imperial courts in Austria and Naples. He preferred sentimental themes and made several skilled works of women with faces covered by veils, one of which is now in the Louvre. A new form of small-scale sculpture appeared, the porcelain figure, or small group of figures, initially replacing sugar sculptures on grand dining room tables, but soon popular for placing on mantelpieces and furniture. The number of European factories grew steadily through the century, and some made porcelain that the expanding middle classes could afford. The amount of colorful overglaze decoration used on them also increased. They were usually modeled by artists who had trained in sculpture. Common subjects included figures from the Commedia dell'arte, city street vendors, lovers and figures in fashionable clothes, and pairs of birds. Johann Joachim Candler was the most important modeler of Meissen porcelain, the earliest European factory, which remained the most important until about 1760. The Swiss-born German sculptor Franz Anton Bustelli produced a wide variety of colorful figures for the Nymphenburg porcelain manufactory in Bavaria, which were sold throughout Europe. The French sculptor Étienne Maurice Falconet (1716–1791) followed this example. While also making large-scale works, he became director of the Sèvres porcelain manufactory and produced small-scale works, usually about love and gaiety, for production in series. Topic: <laughs> Music. A Rococo period existed in music history, although it is not as well known as the earlier Baroque and later classical forms. The Rococo music style itself developed out of Baroque music both in France, where the new style was referred to as style galante, gallant, or elegant style, and in Germany, where it was referred to as empfindsamer still, sensitive style. It can be characterized as light, intimate music with extremely elaborate and refined forms of ornamentation. Exemplars include Jean Philippe Rameau, Louis Claude de Quinn, and Francois Couperin in France. In Germany, the style's main proponents were C. P. E. Bach and Johann Christian Bach, two sons of the renowned J. S. Bach. In the second half of the 18th century, a reaction against the Rococo style occurred, primarily against its perceived overuse of ornamentation and decoration. Led by C. P. E. 
Bach, an accomplished Rococo composer in his own right, Domenico Scarlatti, and Christoph Willibald Gluck, this reaction ushered in the classical era. By the early 19th century, Catholic opinion had turned against the suitability of the style for ecclesiastical contexts because it was in no way conducive to sentiments of devotion. Russian composer of the Romantic era Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky wrote the variations on a Rococo theme, Opus 33, for cello and orchestra in 1877. Although the theme is not Rococo in origin, it is written in Rococo style. Fashion Rococo fashion was based on extravagance, elegance, refinement and decoration. Women's fashion of the 17th century was contrasted by the fashion of the 18th century, which was ornate and sophisticated, the true style of Rococo. These fashions spread beyond the royal court into the salons and cafés of the ascendant bourgeoisie. The exuberant, playful, elegant style of decoration and design that we now know to be Rococo was then known as Le Style Rocai, Le Style Moderna, Le Gout. A style that appeared in the early 18th century was the Robe Volante, a flowing gown, that became popular towards the end of King Louis XIV's reign. This gown had the features of a bodice with large pleats flowing down the back to the ground over a rounded petticoat. The color palette was rich, dark fabrics accompanied by elaborate, heavy design features. After the death of Louis XIV the clothing styles began to change. The fashion took a turn to a lighter, more frivolous style, transitioning from the Baroque period to the well-known style of Rococo. The later period was known for their pastel colors, more revealing frocks, and the plethora of frills, ruffles, bows, and lace as trims. Shortly after the typical women's Rococo gown was introduced, robe à la Françoise, a gown with a tight bodice that had a low-cut neckline, usually with a large ribbon bows down the center front, wide panniers, and was lavishly trimmed in large amounts of lace, ribbon, and flowers. The Watteau pleats also became more popular, named after the painter Jean Antoine Watteau, who painted the details of the gowns down to the stitches of lace and other trimmings with immense accuracy. Later, the pannier and mantua became fashionable around 1718, they were wide hoops under the dress to extend the hips out sideways and they soon became a staple in formal wear. This gave the Rococo period the iconic dress of wide hips combined with the large amount of decoration on the garments. Wide panniers were worn for special occasions, and could reach up to 16 feet meters in diameter, and smaller hoops were worn for the everyday settings. These features originally came from 17th-century Spanish fashion, known as «gardainfante», initially designed to hide the pregnant stomach, then reimagined later as the pannier. 1745 became the golden age of the Rococo with the introduction of a more exotic, oriental culture in France called «à la Turc». This was made popular by Louis XV's mistress, Madame Pompadour, who commissioned the artist, Charles-André Van Loo, to paint her as a Turkish sultana. In the 1760s, a style of less formal dresses emerged and one of these was the Polonaise, with inspiration taken from Poland. It was shorter than the French dress, allowing the underskirt and ankles to be seen, which made it easier to move around in. Another dress that came into fashion was the robe à l'anglaise, which included elements inspired by the male's fashion, a short jacket, broad lapels and long sleeves. It also had a snug bodice, a full skirt without panniers but still a little long in the back to form a small train, and often some type of lace kerchief worn around the neck. Another piece was the redingote, halfway between a cape and an overcoat. Accessories were also important to all women during this time, as they added to the opulence and the décor of the body to match their gowns. At any official ceremony ladies were required to cover their hands and arms with gloves if their clothes were sleeveless. Gallery Architecture Engravings Painting Rococo-era painting See also 
Rakai Italian Rococo art Rococo in Portugal Rococo in Spain Cultural movement Gilded wood carving History of painting Timeline of Italian artists to 1800 Illusionistic ceiling painting Louis XV style Louis XV furniture Topic. Notes and citations Topic. Bibliography De Morant, Henry Histoire des arts décoratifs. Library Hakahat. Droguet, Anne Les styles transition at Louis XVI. Les editions de l'amateur. ISBN 2-85917-406-0 Caban, Père L'art classique et le baroque, Paris, Larousse, ISBN 978-2-03-583324-2 Dutcher, Robert Caractéristique des styles, Paris, Flammarion, ISBN 2-08-011539-1 Histoire et Dictionnaire de Paris. Robert Lafont. ISBN 2-221-07862-4. Prina, Francesca, Demartini, Elena Petite Encyclopédie de l'Architecture. Paris, Solar. ISBN 2-263-04096-X. Hopkins, Owen Les Styles and Architecture. Dunod. ISBN 978-2-10-070689-1. Renault, Christophe 2006, Les styles de l'architecture et du mobilier, Paris, Gisero, ISBN 978-2-877-4746-58. Texier, Simon 2012, Paris Panorama de l'architecture de l'antiquité à nos jours, Paris, Paragram, ISBN 978-2-84096-667-8 Dictionnaire historique de Paris. Le Livre de Poche, 2013. ISBN 978-2-253-13140-3. Vila, Marie-Christine Paris Musique 8 siècles de histoire. Paris, Paragram. ISBN 978-2-84096-419-3. Marilyn Stokestad, ed. Art History, 3rd ed. New Jersey, Prentice Hall, 2005. Print Bailey, Govan Alexander, 2014. The Spiritual Rococo, Decor and Divinity from the Salons of Paris to the Missions of Patagonia. Farnham, Ashgate. 2. Further reading Kimball, Fisk The Creation of the Rococo Decorative Style. New York, Dover Publications. ISBN 0-486-23989-6. Arno Schonberger and Haldor Soner, 1960. The Age of Rococo. Published in the U.S. as the Rococo Age, Art and Civilization of the Eighteenth Century originally published in German, 1959. Levy, Michael 1980. Painting in 18th-century Venice. Ithaca, Cornell University Press. ISBN 0-8014-1331-1. Kellerman, Paul 1967. Baroque and Rococo in Latin America. New York, Dover Publications. ISBN 0-486-21698-5. External links all-art.org, Rococo in the History of Art Rococo Style Guide British Galleries. Victoria and Albert Museum. Retrieved 16 July 2007. Burgerfoundation.ch, Rococo Style Examples Barack und Rococo Architecture, Volume 1, Part 1, 1892 in German Kenneth Franzheim Two Rare Books Room, William R. Jenkins Architecture and Art Library, University of Houston Digital Library